All right, hello everyone. Uh, I have a very interesting case of uh, sarcoma of toe that presented as an endo endobronchial mass. I guess everyone must have seen at least one sarcomas in their practice. Sarcomas is a huge family of soft and bony tumors that can occur in any age group. So I have a 52-year-old gentleman who does not have any past medical history, perfectly fine, probably never saw a physician in his life, came to our hospital with complaints of weakness, cough, and fever for about two weeks. The onset was abrupt. He didn't have any sick contacts. Um, he, he did not have any other complaints other than this. Review of systems was remarkable for about 20 pound weight loss in the last two to three months. And a uh, few days ago, he had bumped himself into a coffee table, so he had a swollen toe with some pain there, but that didn't bother him. So we do a chest x-ray on him. We found we, the chest x-ray was abnormal. Uh, there was left lower lobe consolidation with a possible mass. So he gets a CAT scan, as you can see. On the left side, you can see a huge mass with collapse of the left lobe. So there was a suspicion for tumor there. So uh, the patient gets admitted, uh, we consult pulmonary, they do a bronchoscopy the next day. This is the image of his bronchoscopy. This is the carina, and as you can see, there is a subcarinal lesion. The left bronchus is almost completely occluded. We take some biopsy uh, from the same area. Also, the CAT scan did show massive lymphadenopathy here. The next day, pathologist calls us and he says that um, this doesn't look like a typical lung cancer because all the stains that he had for lung cancer were negative, namely pancreatin stain, CK56, napsin stain, even the neuroendocrine markers like synaptophysin and NSE were negative. So he said that give me more time, I'll have to run a couple of more tests and see what this tumor actually is, but there is a good chance that this is a metastatic lesion and not a primary. So the patient is there in the hospital, he's getting IV antibodies, he's getting better. And after uh, two days, the pathologist calls back, stating that this looks like a sarcoma because it's stained positive for Vimantin. That's the only stain that was positive. All the other stains were negative. So everybody starts thinking, where did this sarcoma come from? The patient does not have any evident lesion. And someone just thought of the toe pain and thought, let's just do an X-ray of the toe and see what's going on there. It, the, it's been almost two weeks if patient had just a simple tissue injury or edema, it should have gone by then. So this is what his foot x-ray looks like. As you can see, there's complete destruction of the distal helix. Um, the radiologist read this as an osteolytic lesion suggestive of osteomyelitis, but on physical exam, it did not look like osteomyelitis. The toe was slightly tender to touch, but there was no sign of inflammation. So a suspicion of this being tumor was very high and the next day we chop his toe off and biopsy the bone and the soft tissue. And it turns out that that was positive for sarcoma as well. So the sarcoma was lying in his toe all this months, silent, sending out metastatic lesions to lung and all other organs without having any local symptoms. Retrospectively, the patient recalls having dull, vague discomfort in his toe, but he never paid any attention to it. Uh, on further workup, uh, he had a small lesion in his brain and meds to liver and spleen. So the sarcoma was everywhere. These are a few histopathology slides. As you can see, these are some pancreatin stains. If this were positive, they would look brown, but they are pink. And this is the Vimantin stain, uh, very specific for sarcomas. And the, these two slides are from the toe. This is the epidermis, dermis, fat tissue, and all this is tumor. On high power, as you can see, the, the tumor is made up of both cellular components and fibrous components. These are big multinucleated tumor cells. So the patient was given treatment options, um, and he, he did want treatment since he is a young guy. 
So we referred him to a tertiary care center which has expertise in sarcomas. So for primary care providers, what do we need to know about sarcomas? If you have a suspicion for sarcoma, do not biopsy that yourself. You want to refer your patient to a specialized center where they have more experience with sarcomas. The reason is sarcoma treatment requires further planning. The treatment for early stage sarcomas 1, 2, and 3 is surgery. So if you take a chunk of the, of the tumor and if the margins are not free of tumor, there's a good chance that you might throw in some micro tumors in the circulation and that might lead to metastasis. So they always recommend that if there is a suspicion for sarcoma, refer, the, refer your patients to a tertiary center where um, all, the different su surgical team, um, hemong team can get together on board and decide what the treatment plan is. For early stage tumors, surgery is the mainstay. Chemotherapy is usually not required. It's required only if the margins are not free of tumor. For late stage sarcomas, chemotherapy is the only choice and it's usually palliative. Uh, previously in the past, uh, all the sarcomas used to get same chemotherapy, but now we have found out that there are 50 plus histologic subtypes of sarcoma and treatment now is individualized depending on what histology it is. So for this patient who had undifferentiated pleomorphic sarcoma, the choice of treatment was doxorubicin and ifofsamide. Um, usually in younger patients who can tolerate chemotherapy, we do a combination chemotherapy. In older individuals, we probably will just go for one chemotherapy agent. Role of radiation, uh, it, it is individualized. Some sarcomas are very resistant to radiation, um, as was this case. Um, for his bronchial mass, we, we uh, did, we gave him some radiation, but it had no effect. Um, the other fortunate thing about sarcomas is that if your sarcoma is high grade, there's a good chance he'll respond to chemotherapy, whereas if the sarcoma is low grade, early stage, there's a good chance it won't respond. So this patient uh, got two cycles of chemotherapy and there was significant shrinkage in his tumor load. And uh, we are following this patient. This patient is currently enrolled in a clinical trial and we'll see how he does. The prognosis for sarcomas range anywhere from two years to four years. And if he responds to chemotherapy, it can go up to even 10 years. So these are a nasty family of sarcoma, of tumors, which can, um, which can present in a different way. You just have to look, look out for those tumors. And that's it. Any questions?